Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here as invited uh, speaker and uh, I'm delighted to give you a little bit overview of what is happening in Finland and in Kuopio, that is my hometown that I'm coming from. And perhaps uh, we can find some something to share with us, between us. And uh, My designation at Kuopio Innovation is a technology and business foresight, so I try to be a few steps ahead of what is happening and what is coming there and trying to uh, input that information or feed that information to companies, to public services and especially to healthcare in this uh, field that we are, we are working on. So, this is currently the stage at my hometown, Kuopio, Finland. This picture is from my backyard when I left uh, uh, day before uh, yesterday. It was looking like that. It was snowing really nice. The temperature was around zero, but still uh, at least 10 centimeters snow on the roads. And as you can see from the backyards, uh, one meter or two meters could be the snow situation there. And actually, uh, Two weeks ago, we had an ice marathon in Finland. That is a world championship ice marathon, skating ice marathon. And that is uh, kept on top of the Lake Kalavesi. The lake is frozen and we are making this ice skating road there. And we are ice skating 100 or 200 kilometers. <laughs> this year was the speciality. We also had the bike marathon on top of the ice, but of course the bikes had a spike wheels, you know, that you don't slip there so easily. So, where we are located, Europe, Finland, and uh, the Kuopio is in the eastern center part of the Finland. And city of the Kuopio, you can see there, and uh, I can show you because uh, it's related to much for the health care and social uh, services in Finland. Uh, at the moment, each municipality in Finland has authority to arrange the health and social care services. And in Finland we have around 300 municipalities, so it's really uh, spread out. And we are merging the municipalities together and Popio is here and uh, last year we merged Maanika municipality and here before that we merged uh, Nilsia municipality. So we are merging different cities together and that also brings us some interesting uh, mm. issues how to handle all the personnel and how we integrate the services together. And you can see these uh, numbers up there that is actually coordinates the longitude and latitude. And if you are coming from Kuopio you know what is the exact point of those numbers? It is the Kuopio marketplace. <laughs> that is the center of the world. As we like to say in that region, Savo region, Mualiman Napa in Finnish. Everything is happening from the center of the city. The marketplace is uh, in the center of the city, in the heart of the city. That is the city hall in the background. And we are measuring every distance from the marketplace there and there and there, how long is every place. So that is the heart of the city. And going back to this winter time and innovation, uh, innovation doesn't mean always uh, it has to be some fancy or uh, high technology ideas, it can be anything, social innovations or anything. This is from a frozen pond in heart of the city. In Kuopio we are having every year this uh, ice fishing competition on top of the pond. That is actually my family there. My father is drilling the hole. My wife, lovely wife, is here and my youngest daughter and my son is there and I'm behind the camera there. Actually my family is visiting the Belfast first time mm. together with me in this trip here. So. Uh, they are very excited as well. So what is about the innovation here? Basically, you drill the hole using your hands. 
but my father as it's a technical and a little lazy man as we are, he connected this electric drill to that <laughs> ice drill. So. so that is innovation also because it uh, gives you an advantage to do something, it helps you. And I think these kind of events are really good because it brings the community together. It engages the community also together. And, uh, but in ice fishing, it's all about uncertainty as in fishing alone. You put a hook to the hole and you're hoping that the fish catches. You never know if it catches, but you know that you have the hole there. You know there are some fishes trying to catch it. Uncertainty. And uh, another innovation leading from this to the center of the world, the Kuopio market, please. There was an idea from the local entrepreneur why we cannot have this ice fishing experience in summertime in the center of the city in the marketplace. That's a crazy idea, but anyway, he took the idea. This is the design there wooden rowboat on top of the marketplace. Below the marketplace there's a big parking hall underneath. The plan was to drill the hole to the roof of the parking hall and the big fish tank in the parking hall. And you can sit in the wooden rowing boat doing ice fishing in the summertime. <laughs> that was the idea, great. <laughs> but this is uh, actually the situation last summer we had this uh, Healthy Cities meeting in Kuopio, and this is the actual moment that there was grand opening of this crazy idea. And actually the Minister of Social and Health was the opening, the actual. <laughs> the Minister was giving the opening speech in the Healthy Cities conference, and then when he left, he went to this opening. <laughs> so it is available. So that is also kind of a community innovation, I think, that we find little crazy ideas or ideas that many say that this never will be realized. This is so crazy. Don't ever think that you can do this, but it's realized and it is there. But it's not available winter times because we have frozen lakes there. Summer times is available. And this leads to this uh, Finnish uh, government tasks at the moment. The government program says that we should exploit experimentation culture and digitalization more in Finland. What experimentation culture means? It means basically you know where you are, like in ice fishing, you know you are on top of the ice. You know what you have to do, you have to catch the fish that are on below the ice, but you are not certain how you will get the fish there, what kind of means you should use there. But experimentation culture is all about that. Fast experimentations, light weighted, not too much investments at first time. You have to figure out, for example in health, you have to figure out, we would like to have this kind of services in future, and we are here, but we don't know how to get there. You can start to plan the road there, spend a few years planning, 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 and then implementing, implementing, or you can start experimenting right away, trying, 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 going, 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 and find the way there. That is actually the way how you can see this, uh, characters there, they are actually from a game called Angry Birds, perhaps mm -hmm. some of you know. A couple of years ago that was a hit game with every mobile platform and you just uh, use this rubber band to shoot uh, bad pigs with the Angry Birds. And actually that is me there in the rubber band there. <laughs> but in games and gaming industry this kind of experimentation culture is used they, if you have watched how games are created, they have vision. We like to do this and this amazing thing. But how? We don't know. They start to do. They are not preparing exact plans. Just going, testing, going, and evaluating every step 
with the people, with the customers, and finding out is this the right way. And uh, if you think how this Angry Birds relates to health, this is nice in the, the Europe. European Union made a survey, European Directory of Health Applications, two years ago. And actually, it is interesting directly because the applications are reviewed by the patients and empowered customers, not by the physicians or health professionals. Okay, there's a contradiction. I mean, I have shown this, many doctors say, okay, <coughs> this is nothing, we cannot rely on these results because. It's patients that has made this choice. Angry Birds is listed there, one of the applications that helps in mental health. The game never have been designed for the health issues. Well, the empowered customers, they like to think that it helps us, so why not? And why we should pay attention also for the gaming industry? Many times uh, when you're planning, especially digital, services, the usability, how to use the services. You, you might lay out uh, excellent services and hope that the uh, customers are starting to use them. But I can assure you that they won't start to use them. You have to pay really good attention for the user experience, how the customers who are using the services feels the applications. And the games, they have really good viewpoint there. In games you have always specific goal. You can imagine it can be also health goal. They, it's, they have challenges, they have interaction and they have rules and also reward system the rewarding system. So it motivates the player there. It gives inspiration, engagement. You want to do it again and again. How to combine these two health. Why not? It's really obvious. Same rules, you can build stories behind the applications, behind the services, like in games. It doesn't have to be really dull interface, I cannot reduce this. It could be inspiring story that you are uh, going through and at the same time you are doing something towards your health solutions. And uh, about the experimentation, again, in Finland, there's a uh, fixed time law, the municipal trial law in Finland that has a certain aspect. One is that it should, uh, the law gives permission uh, to break other laws, uh, let's say. So it gives you permission to try things that cannot be tried uh, otherwise. And one, one issue that uh, the law tries to solve is how to create integrated welfare plan for the citizens, especially in social and health aspects. There are so many different uh, actors, for example, in young, young person life, if they have some uh, issues during their life related to family, housing, finances, health, friends, whatever, they visit different actors, the information, and each actor and stakeholder they create its own information about the customer, about the young people. For example, the, but they do not share the information. How to combine the information so that actually my life, the actual person is responsible for all the information that comes and shares between different actors and stakeholders. In Kuopio, city of Kuopio, they have created this kind of a, the circle of life that is kind of questionnaire. Uh, in these 10 different uh, life issues, there's uh, self-esteem, resilience, studies, family, friends, etc., etc. And they have laid out, because they understand it's questionnaire, how they evaluate what kind of services the young people need, that if they are trying to ask, long list of questions from the young people frustrated they are not good. The city of Popio they launched competition. How to use 
gamification and technology to make this question or technology, this uh, questionnaire something that the young people they uh, feel that this is in my language, this is something that I know, this is fun, this is excellent. And when they are, the city hopes that they get ideas how to do this kind of really tough service in a different way and start to develop that further and combine all this information together. And this also goes that focus on people and for example, in Finland, we are going also pretty much change in a school system that we are bringing starting from next semester from the autumn technology or uh, let's say program, programming much more and digital ways of doing education in school, study from primary school, secondary school, and going up and up and up. The, for example, in Kuopio, the upper secondary schools, they are using virtual reality environments, or they are using the students, students to create the envi environments that they feel that they can <coughs> learn better using this. So the actual students are doing the content there. Of course, there are teachers following up and there are the official material available there. But they are using the new technology, new ways to approach the issues there as well. But, again, I repeat, focus on the people. When you are bringing technologies, there are always, always and always someone who doesn't know how to use the technology. When somebody who doesn't know how to use the technology, it's a fear, I don't like to use it, because perhaps I broke it, if I use, I press the wrong button, no, no. You have to take the time to teach the citizens, teach the people in their own environment how to use and utilize technology. Technology is the tool, it, has, it shouldn't be the master, <coughs> which tells what to do, but it has to be something that you have paying attention to. And a good way that we have found out to develop new services, for example, for city, or something related to health, is this kind of game jams or hackathons, really fast uh, the experimentation events 48 hours, 24 hours, bringing different uh, different background of people together thinking about how we could solve these issues and perhaps create a prototype or concept of service or something. And this is excellent way also to engage the community together. And we have uh, created several prototypes related to health and technology in this this kind of events, and you can see a few of here that have been tested. When the prototype is created, it is straight away tested with the real environment. For example, for brain rehabilitation patients, different kind of technology solutions. These are utilizing games. This lady is my favorite. She said that. I have never used any computers, anything. I don't know how to play, but when she saw the table, <laughs> and I got in action. So these are just an examples that what can be done utilizing technology. And smart garments, that is something that are coming. So the technology is coming more and more closer to us so that it is more unnoticed for us can be built in your clothes or something, you don't have to carry these anymore. So when you forget that you are using technology, then I think that the technology is in the right track. But again, the community engagement. If you are building new services, the people won't use it if you don't engage the people. So this is from the Kuopio region again, and you can see 
can see here that the proportion of most of the people are living in the center areas, and then in different regions in Kuopio city area. We had a fast experimentation in Kuopio, experimenting, for example, personal health record, gaming aspects, medical assessment, uh, technologies, uh, uh, maternal clinic solutions, uh, utilizing technologies, and different others. And how we did that, we went through each part of the city of Kuopio. We, we didn't invite the people to come to, for example, the center of the city. We engaged with the local, uh, local communities in different parts. We went to their own events. We explained, we showed, they could test it. We collected feedback and we adapted the feedback with the service. Okay, so this is really important. And uh, why in Finland we are doing so much technology in health? This is one aspect. We have a national strategy for e-health and e-social e -social as well. How to use information to support well-being services. It's really important as in Finland uh, already we have uh, about uh, over 25% uh, aged over 60 so our age pyramid is upside down already so we don't have enough hands to do and our country is quite long so long distances rural areas we have to provide services our constitution says that we have to provide equal health services for every citizen. But if we don't have enough people, we have to find out in other ways of providing those services and provide equal, equal uh, access. This is the minister's viewpoint. So the balance is shifting to citizens, doing it myself, giving tools to citizens that they can start to learn more about their own health. They start to know if I'm doing this, it affects my health this way. If I'm not doing that, it affects this my health. So they can uh, certain, certain way visualize their own health status. So they can be doctors by themselves in health promotion, let's say. And when something really is happening for their health, they know where to go and seek the professional health. And, but this is a two way of doing, also the professionals. And this is also the really important part, the professionals, they have to know how to use the tools, they have to have all the information available. If the professionals don't know what is available, how to use the tools and technologies, I can also assure that the solutions won't go further. One interesting that I have been following that is happening in Northern Ireland is the telemonitoring trial. I haven't seen that kind of a large-scale trial anywhere at the moment. And I think that when it started from 2008 or something, the whole Europe stopped at the moment just to wait and look the results here, what we could utilize from here. And uh, even though in Finland we are using a lot of technology, just last autumn the ministry made a guideline that the remote health service is comparable to clinical visit. Just now. And uh, that of course related that uh, the supervision authority made a really uh, strict guideline how the doctors or physicians can provide that kind of help, but they have to pay attention if they are using video communication, so be sure that there are not other people listening or something, something. And it also uh, related that uh, in Finland, 80% uh, of the health care is provided by the public sector, and we are, the citizens are insured by the national social insurance. So also the Kela, the social insurance institution, made the decision that you can have reimbursed from this kind of telehealth services. Also, 
cross polar cross services if the citizen who is treated is Finnish citizen, of course. This is really interesting. But back in the professionals. If the professionals don't know or understand the technology, the new solutions they won't go further. And uh, this is all, I think this relates also how the medical professionals are educated. <coughs> in Finland, uh, for example, the medical doctors, they don't get uh, technical education in their studies when they are studying at the university because they are focusing on people that, as they should be. But when they are coming from the school, university, the actual work, the clinical work, it's all about computers, it's all about technology and they are many times hands up, oh, I don't know, this doesn't work. But uh, there is some special uh, qualifications that doctors can achieve during their clinical work. And in Finland, uh, we have created e-health special qualification for medical doctors and dentists. So they can apply this and uh, have a qualification to utilize different kind of technologies. This is something that uh, isn't available in many countries. I think Finland is one of the worst, first uh, doing this. It means that you have to have at least five years of clinical expertise. It means that you have to participate developing systems utilizing technology. It means that you have to participate giving feedback from the systems, not only complaining that this doesn't work, but finding a way that this could work better if this and this and this would be like this. Uh, it, start, it has been available since 2013 and now there's uh, about 70 approved qualifications. And another thing that is uh, bringing more information is the genome. And uh, Finland, we are building the Finnish genome strategy and biobanks throughout the country. And uh, we are thinking how to utilize also that information that is coming from these biobanks, from our genome, or how we can utilize that information to create uh, more focused, personalized medicines, whatever, services. And if we combine that information, to health information, to environmental information, social information, housing, financial. We have so much data available. What can we do with that? And now we are planning different kind of things in Finland. And I think this is also the issue to be open-minded. What you can do with this information. This is from my favorite series from my young days, Star Trek, they had this medical dry order device this. when they saw the device, they could scan your health condition and it says, okay, you have this and this and this and this. So, science fiction, yes. Perhaps not anymore. This is uh, not from Finland, but uh, I like this uh, X-Prize competitions. There has <coughs> been several years a competition on this tripod. Whoever creates that kind of device wins 10 million US dollar price. And actually, there is seven finalists already, and they will announce the winner in the beginning of next year. The uh, target is to find a device that can diagnose 13 health conditions, utilizing this kind of big data coming from different areas. Just like scanning, okay. You have a Diabetes, for example. So, science fiction is coming. Be open-minded. Don't say no at first. This is also open-minded. This is from uh, Kuopio, one of the government uh, learning and consulting schools where the kids with special needs are trained. This is uh, this was showing that you can utilize technology and games to do something that they cannot do otherwise. So this, uh, for example, the teachers, they, they have really much appraised the use of technology in this situation because 
the students in this school they start to feel that we can do the same things as our friends that are, don't have these disabilities or these special needs. It's really nice to see also this. And uh, also, I like to say that uh, you should think uh, when you are defining or designing your services or whatever innovations, think always from bomb to dom. Not focusing too uh, strict or focused area because as we people, as we humans, we are beings uh, starting from when we are having birth and when we are dying and we are living in different stages, stages of life. How the service can be uh, good for us in different stages. Because healthcare, many times when you, uh, you are born, you are visiting the clinic there, when you are working, you are using the occupational health, when you are retiring, then you are retiring. But you also, you need different, at uh, different stages, uh, different kind of services. And if you drop out from the, uh, let's say, society, uh, society's lap, then you are in different states. You can have different kind of problems. So we should uh, think that the innovation should be in these, all these different areas uh, available. And finally, a few words about the city of the Kuopio, the smart city concept that they are doing, the Savilahti, that is the area actually that is having nowadays the science park in Kuopio University, applied university, high technology companies. But uh, when the day is over, it gets empty. Because people are there studying and going to work. But how Kuopio likes to see it in the future is it's really near the city center. They like to invest there, they like to build new things, the smart city area, the suburban area there, invest the estimate is billion euros there. They like to utilize because it's just near the waterfront. Utilize the waterfront because it is also good for your mental health when you see the nature where you are living. They are thinking of building houses, living environments in that working studying science park environment. So when the day is over, they're still living and uh, people are there, community is there and the, the city doesn't go and everything is gone there. And they, the city likes to utilize all the technologies that are available, high technologies, what kind of technologies can be used, environmental technologies, energy technologies, health related technologies, that they are starting to build this area. So these are the features. At the moment, there are 19,000 people visiting the area, this suburban area. But uh, in a few years to come, the city thinks, likes to have that there are well, uh, 34,000 people visiting there. And you can see where the increase is the most. Now there's just few people living there, but they are building a lot of, lot of living quarters for the inhabitants there. And uh, as you can see from the images there, also of course the visualizations, but they like to have it's really good uh, environment that utilizes all the smart technologies that are available. Yes, <coughs> and this is my final. I like this is uh, from Roberto Saracco of uh, IEEE. The cities of the future will be self-aware, much like a bee. I like this, as my background is technology. But the cities will be able to reconfigure themselves based on what's happening and what might happen in the immediate future. Meaning that the cities are also sentient in the such that uh, they, uh, there's technology available that can help the citizens there collect information and uh, make services even better. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.